Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Fund and welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Škoda's e-mobility. And currently I'm there, here in Mlada Boleslav at the Škoda headquarters. And look at that Enyaq over there. That has some interesting design. Well, I'm not here because of this Enyaq, I am here for different content. I did a lot of videos the couple last two days and now I'm heading back home. And this video is exactly about that, driving from Melz, my hometown, to Mlada Boleslav and back to Melz in winter times because it's cold, it's snowy and since I did a lot of videos on the road trip Mlada Boleslav and Melz, this is a perfect addition to see how the Enyaq performs in winter times, how the charging is done and what the consumption will be. So here we go. As late as I arrived at the hotel yesterday uh, I wasn't able to charge up anything in my car and basically the slow charger at the hotel is solely for Škoda employees. Yes I couldn't charge up there. So basically now I'm trying to charge up for the return drive and you see I have 23% SOC, I'm here at a fast charger and it got cold overnight. The battery was at 7 degrees before I came here, now it's 9.5 and you see the fluid temperature around the battery is 33 degrees Celsius due to the activation of the battery preheating. But basically if you start like this under such bad conditions it needs over 30 minutes to heat up and I only have 74 kilowatts of fast charging power right now because the fast charger is only 10 minutes from the hotel. And if you're in a situation like that in winter you uh, even if you have preheating you won't get a real fast charging. But let's plug in and let's see. So here we go and we are up to 85 kilowatts, that's not much, it's snowy, it's cold outside. This is not the best conditions for charging a car that is not preheated and as you can see it's not getting very much higher. And now we see something which you will never experience with the first generation Enyaq, but with the second generation. We are already at 35% SOC and yet we have a battery power, so a charging power of nearly 125 kilowatts, 126 there. And this is due to the max, uh, this is due to the improved heating in the second generation Enyaq. With the first generation Enyaq basically you wouldn't have uh, much more than 70 to 80 kilowatts and at 35% SOC it will start to decline. Whilst with this generation, the second generation, it even gets higher now until a state of charge of 50% is reached. So I would imagine we see up to 135, 140 kilowatts. Normally you do charging tests with a preheated battery, but it gets really excited if you do it with a cold battery, so a cold charging test. Imagine this scenario, you stayed somewhere overnight and the battery is has a low state of charge and the other morning you want to charge and therefore you go to a fast charger and there's not enough time to preheat the battery. And then you might come to a fast charger like I did with a battery with 9 degrees Celsius. But for most scenarios in most seasons in Europe this is a quite good value for a battery temperature. And then we still have a state of charge of 28%. This is not optimal but that's such a common use case you see here. And when I plugged in you see now the diagram where it directly went up and we reach a peak of 145 kilowatts of charging power. That is really, really, really good. Imagine you will have an Enyaq the first generation with no preheating. Then in that scenario you are lucky if you see 60 to 70 kilowatts. Of course this car could charge up to 175 but with this battery and this temperature this is not possible but that value is really really good. And you see that drop? Yes, if you watched my last video about charging tests you already know that. And this is not common for the Enyaq or the LROC. This is something which has to do with the charger itself. And yes, you guessed it. It's exactly again an ABB Terra 360 as with my last charging test. And this charger again does exactly the same. That drop and then another plateau. For me this is the proof that it is definitely a built-in behavior of the charger. 
And if you look overall of this, this is a really good charging curve when you'd go with a cold battery and a rather high state of charge to a fast charger. So you don't have to be afraid uh, to go there with such a battery with your L-Rock or your ENIAC second generation or your ENIAC facelift. I could only charge up to 70% here because I had an appointment afterwards so I had to leave the charger. Again, this might be a common scenario. You do not have to charge to 80% but overall this is a really good result. And to be honest, most of the times you will come to a fast charger with a preheated battery and don't have to worry about that at all. So first charging stop over, 8% 29 kilometers left. Yeah, it took me an hour longer than planned due to all the traffic jams around Prague. And then later there was another one due to an accident. Yeah, and so just an hour lost and you can't make up for this. Kind of happy that it's already charging at top speed here. So I don't have to wait much longer, but I will hop in the rest station back there and then we hit each other again. And then sometimes if you're unlucky, you are really unlucky. So I was in there and got myself a Subway sandwich. You can see it somewhere there, doesn't matter. And uh, luckily for me, I didn't eat it inside there because when I came out, my Ionity charger wasn't charging anymore. It stopped at 17%, so charged only 9% and I wasted a couple of minutes. Imagine I would have eaten my Subway sandwich inside there and uh, then I would came back to the Anyak and the My Skoda app said nothing. The Ionity app said nothing. So basically uh, I had to replug. Now I'm charging again. And again, luckily for me at top speed over 170 kilowatts. And I need that because I have to travel still a long distance home. But let me now have my subway sandwich. And in the meantime, you can see how my drive to Mlada Boleslav was, because that was one very fine ride. Hello everyone from the hotel room here in Mlada Boleslav. The reception was closing and I didn't want them to wait for me for recording everything in the car. So I put everything up in the hotel room and do the recording from my drive to Mlada Boleslav in the hotel room. I hope you don't mind. So it was a quite straightforward drive. I didn't expect that. Due to worse weather conditions than normal, we had a lot of rain, snowy rain, wet terrain, and I was driving most time in the darkness so I wouldn't have expected that I only need 6 hours and 42 minutes for driving up here over 700 kilometers. Yes, this is nearly the same as you can do in summertime. You can't go much faster even if there is some unlimited speed in Germany. This is quite a good well you but consumption is higher. Yes, 25.2 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers because we have it rather cold outside. It was one or two degrees Celsius. We got that rain, that snowy rain and I have winter tires on my Enyaq and therefore this is quite good. I did not only eat my subway sandwich, I already drove further on my way home and now I'm at Eching by Munich. You see it here, I'm at an Ionity. I'm the only one here already charging up. And yes, my mood has improved significantly because I had real flow while driving through Germany. It's great when you drive in the evening hours. Less trucks, less traffic. Let's talk about that uh, three stop strategy when charging instead of two which would be enough. Well basically I drove from Mlada with 100% to my first stop over where I arrived at 8% Wernberg Koblitz and there I only charged up to around 65% because that was absolutely enough to speed through down here to Munich and I arrived here at the charger with a very good SOC. I could have even charged 5% less in Wernberg Koblitz. And again, here I could potentially charge up to around 90, 95% because it's only 278 kilometers till home. But the time spent charging the last 20, 25% here is better invested out on the road. So again, maybe I only charge up to 60% and I'm at 43 already and I will just drive around 150 kilometers and then at another highway stop where I just need to pull out and plug in, I will charge the rest amount of energy I need. And when you sum this up, you are way faster doing it this way 
then doing a two charge stop over and charge up here. The last charging stop, the third one for today, already again up to 11% started with nine. The first attempt failed, so I needed to replug and start again. But now we are charging as we should. Driving back home from Lada Boleslav took me seven hours and 21 minutes due to the traffic jams. I've got those three, which adds up to an hour. But if you compare time to another, well, it's only 39 minutes of a difference from driving there and driving back home. Why is that? Well, the reason for this charging strategy is quite simple. The more you charge, the slower the charging gets. And when we look at the ENYAQ of the second generation, basically, you can charge uh, up to 60% in around 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if you start at five or 10%. And this is a whopping 10 kilometers a minute, which you add to your range. After that, from 60 to 70, it drops. So you only get around six kilometers per minute. And from, six, uh, and from 70 to 80%, it's only four kilometers a minute. Basically, it's no problem at all to charge up to 80% in that 23, 25 or even 28 minutes you might need for that. And therefore, I am interested, how are you doing this? Do you charge always like your car says? Or do you always charge to 80 no matter what? Or have you already tried different charging strategies? Write me down in the comments. Because within the ENYAQ, you can only say how much kilometers do you want arriving at your destination or at the stopover for charging. And then the ENYAQ decides for itself how much it wants to charge. So I'm curious how you manage this whole thing. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider to subscribe to the channel because then you do not miss any new video when I'm, for example, doing even more content on charging strategy and chart ups. And if you're interested in that, subscription is the way to go. And then we see each other in one of those next videos. And until then, stay full of energy.